Amen. Can we say praise the Lord? Can we stand and give him some praise in the house this morning? Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. Thank you for our lives, our health, and our strength. Lord, we ask that you come in this service and bless all that happens. Bless all that are watching online and bless everyone under the sound of my voice in the building. Touch the speaker this morning. Lord, bless pastor, bless first lady this morning. Lord, bless everyone that stands in need of a blessing, Lord. Lord, come in, Lord, let us know the reason why we're here is to lift up your name and give you the highest praise. Lord, do these things for us and we'll be so careful to give your name the praise. All the glory and honor shall be yours. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 In the 
came to worship him this morning. Amen. He's worthy of all our praise. Amen. He's worthy of all our praise. Amen. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. Let's just worship him for a couple more moments. Amen. Amen. Let's give him some more praise. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house this morning. We're going to have a, a very special focus on the youth this morning. I'm coming for my sister Jackie Jenkins. Give her a hand as she comes. Amen. Good morning, church family. I'm Sister Jackie Jenkins, Chair of the Community Relations Ministry here at Morningstar. I'm also a 20-year member, living my best year ever. Yes. So I wanted to focus on the youth this morning, and you adults can listen in too. I want to talk about the topic, recognizing your spiritual gifts. Now the Bible says in Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I made you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I chose you for a special work. I chose you to be prophet to the nations. So not only did God form you in your mother's womb, he sent his Holy Spirit to give you and all of us special gifts. You and everybody has at least one spiritual special gift and maybe more. With that, God, with that gift, God wants you to grow and improve his kingdom. He wants you to build up the church by serving his people. And yes, he wants to grow you and strengthen you in your own spirit. So God wants you to know it, grow it, and live it. So how do we develop that gift? We read the scripture, the study the scriptures, the Bible. We, we read all the scriptures related to spiritual gifts. We pray and we ask God to reveal those gifts, to lead us, direct us, direct our steps also. Go to church. People will see your gifts, admire your gifts, and there you can grow your gifts. And you will need your parents along the way, trust me, yes. So I know many members here at Morningstar who use those spiritual, spiritual gifts every Sunday. But I was thinking about one person, TJ. TJ was five years old when he started playing the drums right here in that corner at Morningstar. Yes, amen? And <laughs> TJ, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. And TJ was so little that we had to boost him up in the chair so he could reach and play the drums. And boy, did he play the drums. But look at TJ now. He's still playing the drums. Where's TJ? <laughs> TJ isn't little anymore. <laughs> yes but they had to boost him up in that chair so he could play the drums. So as you can see, he's not a little anymore, but he has the gift. He has the spiritual gift, and he's been using it for years to minister God's people, to minister people around the world and to minister us here at Morningstar. So today, I wanna to introduce to you someone who also has a spiritual gift. His name is Gianni, and he is my great, great nephew. His mom is here, and she is my great niece. His grandfather, Robert, is here, and his great grandfather, my brother, Wayne Thomas. And, and, and believe it or not, Wayne started all this greatness. Yes. So, church family helped me to welcome Jocelyn and Gianni to our church. Good 
morning, everyone. Um, I'm Jocelyn. I just want to say thanks for having us this morning. Um, little blurb about my son, Gianni. Um, he's five. Um, he's headed to kindergarten. And um, when he first started preschool, he was in school for about three weeks before the pandemic hit. And um, I had to homeschool. So I was not only mom, maid, I was teacher, therapist, I was all of the above, and I was really nervous because I didn't want him to fall behind. So um, what I did in the month of February uh, for Black History Month, I started teaching him about uh, different black figures in history. Uh, we would color pictures of them, we would watch videos on them, um, maybe catch a short film or something so that he could learn about them and really study them. And um, he went a step further and taught himself all of his US presidents. I cannot take credit for that. I don't really know how he did it um, or really why, but <laughs> um, I'm so glad that he did. Um, he's such a joy, um, very smart and dedicated. And um, he actually stopped speaking around two years old. He didn't talk for months. So the fact that I cannot hush him up now, I can't keep him quiet, um, you know, it's a gift and a curse. <laughs> but um, Gianni's gonna say all of his US presidents to all of you today. And focus. Back to Trey. He's also a singer. Um. Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, Andy Jackson, Marvin Fuhrer, William Henry Harrison, John Tyler, James K. Polk, Zachary Taylor, Millen, Fillmore, Franklin, Pierce, James Buchanan, Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, Lucius Grail, Wilford B. Hayes, James A. Garfield, Jester Arthur, Grover Cleveland, Benjamin Harrison, Grover Cleveland. Grover Cleveland was president twice, by the way. He ran twice. <laughs> William McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, Lowell Wilson, Brian G. Harden, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, White D. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Linda Johnson, Richard M. Nixon, Gerald R. Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, Joe Biden. Now, I want to ask him, um, sometimes it changes, but I want to ask him, who is your favorite president? Barack Obama. <laughs> and why is Barack Obama your favorite president? Because he brushes his teeth every day, don't give his mind a hard time to go to school, or take a bath. Good answer. <laughs> 
Thank you. me it. <laughs> Pierce or somebody, Phil, Phil Moore or whatever. Wow. But GQ was right about one thing, the cleanest president we've ever had. <laughs> Barack Obama, absolutely fabulous, absolutely fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Now, he wants to be, was it a train conductor and a leader and president? Train, train conductor, a leader, and president. Okay, so we know eventually the, uh, the trains are going to be on time. <laughs> And we're going to have great, great leadership, people being led in the right direction. And we are definitely going to have a, a new president. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. Fabulous. Ah. What genius. What genius. Yeah. Um, I want, that's, God is just too awesome. Too awesome. We're tremendously blessed by this uh, presentation and our, our prayer that you will continue, and I know you will continue to work with them and to grow that magnificent gift. Um, he'll probably be teaching uh, the teachers before the end of the year. Um, oof. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And, and um, that, this, this, young, this young man right here that, that Sister Jackie talked about, he, he too was brilliant. We had to, as she said, put him up on the little stand. And this is his father, by the way. Um, um, uh, uh, we had to put him up on the stand and he was playing the drums at, at, that, at that age, at that age. And now, and now, he not only plays the drums, but he plays every, every instrument. I mean every, all the instruments. All the instruments. And he sings. <laughs> we're still, we're waiting on that last manifestation there. <laughs> but he sings as well. We've truly been blessed, and we, so, we thank you so very much. Just know that you're welcome here anytime and all the time, and we look forward to, to having you back. And um, please, 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 we love for you to be a part of our family here at Morningstar. And thank you so much for gracing us with your presence and, and your wonderful, wonderful gift. Um, we have been truly blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's give Brother GQ another hand. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. God is just too awesome. So all of that is in, all of that's in your family, right, Sister Jackie? Yeah, yeah. And it, the genes kind of come from you, don't they? Oh, your brother. Oh, okay, okay. All right, all right. All right. I, I know how we are. We, we'd be claiming credit for things. That... <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So... This morning, the word uh, will be brought to 
brought to us by one who, uh, with whom we are very familiar. Uh, she's a minister of the gospel. And she's been here for many, 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 many years, many years, and she's been a blessing to us over the years. She's been a part of many of our, of our ministries. She's been a part of uh, all of our changes, and she's been active. She's been involved. Uh, a tremendous blessing to Morning Star, uh, a minister of the gospel, seminary trained, um, Reverend Colette Walker. And she lives now um, in Washington, uh, D.C., but, but she's still a part, a member of Morning Star. She's never missed the meeting that she's supposed to be a part of, even, even as she lives in Washington, D.C., attending you know, further education um, in her seminary training. As, she, as most of the things, meetings you know, have been by, by Zoom over these past two and a half years. And so uh, she's with us today. She's going to give us our word today. We want you to, to hear her uh, for God's grace, hear her for her ability. We will be blessed by uh, the word that comes from her. For there is always a word from the Lord. Amen. There's always a word from from the Lord. Now we used to say, we used to say in the old days, after the next selection from the choir. <laughs> I don't know. Do we don't we don't we don't say that today? <laughs> Reverend Colette Walker. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It is so good to see your smiling faces. Oh, how I've missed you. And to all of those who are worship, worshiping with us online, trust me, I know the challenges but believe that God is present even when the signal is not present. God is always working. I first want to thank Pastor Evans, First Lady B, the leadership of this great church, the membership of this tremendous church, the friends of this tremendous church, because when you're a great church, you have great friends too. I wanna thank all of you for this ministry opportunity. You know when pastor calls you, it's very hard to say no. And it is an honor and a privilege to be at home. There are not enough words to convey to you how I have treasured in my heart the awesome fellowship, friendship, the fun we have here. And we will continue to be the best church on earth. Amen. I'm sure of it. And while situations and circumstances may change, God remains the same. Amen. So let us get started. Please stand and let us read together Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. And I will be reading from the English Standard Version. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18. Let us read. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Pray with me. God, our help and our wholeness, thank you for this moment. Thank you for open doors to spread your holy word and open minds and hearts to receive it. I have eaten. Now feed your people, God, according to their need and your taste. Let everyone leave here satisfied. Let everyone under the sound of my voice be satisfied and full of your empowering spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Deacon Jackie, for validating and undergirding my word today, talking about babies and the Holy Spirit. So this is an interesting scripture, and I want to read just a little bit more for some context. So I'm going to read um, Matthew 1, 19 through 25. And her husband Joseph, and her is Mary, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken to the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call, him, call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen. Amen. While I'm pretty sure this is a familiar scripture to many of you, I'm not so sure how familiar it is for you to hear this scripture on the fifth Sunday of July, 2022. Because this particular set of scriptures is often and usually read during the Christmas season. But the church as a whole is guilty sometimes of pigeonholing certain scriptures for certain seasons like Christmas or Easter or Pentecost. And then we only speak about those scriptures during that time. Now, there is no harm in that, and that's actually a good thing. And it's a custom that helps us to reinforce the importance of those scriptures and the importance of that season and that particular time of the year. But what has now been codified as tradition can stand in the way of hearing a word from God for whatever time or situation we find ourselves in. Because we know now with global warming, sometimes it's, it's warm in the winter and cool in the summer. And I want to tell you a little secret. Truthfully, there is never a wrong time to hear a right word from God. I'm going to say that again. There is never a wrong time to hear a right word from God. So right now is the time. And that's one of my justifications for preaching what appears to be a Christmas message at the height of the summer. And another one of my justifications is simply the awesomeness of how Jesus came to earth. The story of his birth is so tremendous and wonderful, perhaps we need to revisit it outside of just Christmas time because it's a story. Um, and it's a story that can speak to us about how you and I got here. And it can also speak to us about this world that we're living in and how it got to be where it is right now. And it can speak to us about what we can do to move forward, to heal, to help deliver folks who are experiencing tremendous loss, pain, um, sickness, 
it's just a, it's a tough time for the people of God. And we should not overlook that while this time is tough, there have been tougher times and there have been tough times in the past. Because sometimes when we're in something, it's like this is the hardest thing that you know, we've ever done as Christians. But we need to gather our strength. We need to gather our resources so we can build back better. And in order to do that, we need to hear a word from God. And I think this particular scripture provides us with instructions on how we can be sure the plans that we're making right now to build back better are plans that are within the way and the will of God. Now Jesus was born at a rough time. He was born during the height of a very destructive and dangerous empire, the Roman Empire. Its leaders were ruthless and they were especially hard on the least of them. The poor, the sick, women, children, not unlike the capitalist empire we call the United States of America today. Today, the rich get richer and richer by the second. And they do less and less and less to get richer and richer and richer. You don't even need a spiritual gift now to be famous and to make money. You don't have to do anything. You, just, you don't even have to look cute. You used to have to at least look cute. You know, know how to wear some clothes. You don't have to do that. You can just do the most ridiculous things and then it goes viral and now you are famous and you are making money from what? Is that a gift? No, is that a gift from God? That's the better question. Today, people are working harder and harder and harder and they're receiving less and less and less of everything. Has prices for necessities like food and housing and healthcare continue to increase to the point where in a country like ours, we have people who sleep on the sidewalk because they can't afford a place to stay people who are working and who are homeless. It was similar to that at the time that Jesus came. And like the time that Jesus was born in, there was a group of people, today they call themselves patriots, exclusive, and their only aim is to make sure everyone who looks like them stays on top. And, and, and anybody who doesn't look like them stays on the, the bottom, under their control and their domination. And that's the kind of world that Jesus was born into. So let's think about that moment, that opportune moment, because I believe right now is an opportune moment for God and for us. So I want to say a little bit about the power of the Holy Spirit during this opportune time. God had a dream. Now I was thinking about that, like God don't sleep, so how God had a dream? <laughs> but we're going to talk about that another time. But God had a dream. And God dreamed of creating this family in partnership with the Holy Spirit and with the open and willing vessel, a human vessel. Matthew 1, 21 says, she, Mary, will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. That's quite a dream. I'm going to birth something that will cure the world. That's a dream. Now, for a dream to take root and grow, all that is needed is a willing and open vessel and the power that only the Holy Spirit can provide. Now, I'm full of questions today. 
God got answers, but I got a lot of questions today. So my question for everyone who is in the sanctuary and everyone who is listening, what is your dream? Do you have a dream? You know, for those who are listening, type in the chat, I have a dream. Martin Luther King had a dream, but do you have a dream? Is there a baby waiting on you to connect to the power of the Holy Spirit so that baby can be birthed into life? Because I believe that there's something inside of each and every one of us. And what we need is the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, in Jesus' time, before Jesus' time, it was prophesied in Isaiah 7, 14. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. But are we that willing vessel, ready to declare like Mary in Luke 1 and 46, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of the almighty servant. A child, a baby. You know, we run around here looking for you know, legislators and adults to do the right thing. And it seems like adults in our world are acting like kids. You know, they get mad and they take their toys and go home. Or they just stop talking. Or they do what kids do when you confront them about a lie they told. They put their head down. And sometimes they lie again to cover up that lie that they did. A child... God's biggest dream, a baby, a baby, a little teeny little thing, a little five-year-old. Now, this child was born without the help of a man. Sorry, not sorry, men. But with the primary source material of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit is a producer, a producer of epic proportions, a producer of dreams no one ever thought were possible or, or could come to fruition. Now, the power of the Holy Spirit can not only change me or you, it can change the whole entire world. The power of the Holy Spirit can realign and reset the evilness of empire. And what we need today is the power of the Holy Spirit. We need it in ourselves and then we need it in our world. Because if we are in this world for such a time as this, that means that the power of the Spirit is in this world for such a time. As this, amen? But who among us is willing? Who among us is able? Who among us is open to receive what the Spirit is offering? You know, we often ask questions of other people, but we need to ask some questions of ourselves in these trying days. Now, the question about are we willing and are we able and are we open connects to the question, can we accept the power of God's Holy Spirit into our lives? Because the power is present, but do we push it away? Do we turn it down or do we say, um, not today, maybe the weekend. And will we, will we be still enough? Because we're moving and we're busy, but will we be still enough so that that power can overshadow us? Or are we too busy trying to create our own dreams in our own way, in our own image, we're trying to make a baby ourselves. And while 
God is the only one that can make a baby without a man. Sometimes we try to make a baby without a man. Or we act like the man ain't present, but that's another story. Um, have we allowed this power, this power of God, that's at work through the wisdom of God, the counsel of God, the faithfulness of God, the understanding of God, the holiness of God, the fortitude of God, the knowledge of God, the power that's available through the reverent fear of God. Have we allowed that power to rule our lives? Something to think about. Because if we don't or we're not, the chances of this dream that we have, and I know you've got a dream, the chances of this dream sprouting into magnificence is greatly diminished. You know, because sometimes plants start and then the heat comes and then they die off, you know, and, and or you'll have something growing and there's not a fruit, there's, there's not a tomato on it, and you wonder well, what happened. What happened to your dream? Is your dream producing any fruit? Now the power of the Holy Spirit don't really care about what you look like, what kind of clothes you got on, how old you are. Don't care about what side of the tracks you live on, how much money you have. The power of the Holy Spirit doesn't care if you're engaged to be married and your parents like him or they don't like him or you know, your friends and neighbors approve of your dream. Because sometimes we run around trying to get people to approve of our dream. You know, and God did not say in God's word that you need the approval of others for the dream that I gave you. God did not say, you know, check with the people at your job first. You know, even to see if they have the same dream, because that's not your problem. Because perhaps there is someone with the same dream, but there is only one you. And there is only one Holy Spirit. And when that Holy Spirit overshadows you, that dream will be the dream that you and God produce. And let the other people do what they're going to do and let God handle the rest. Now, the power of the Holy Spirit Amazing, awesome. It can take a time like we're in now, a time of uncertainty, a time of confusion. Think about Mary, you know, about to be married. You got a husband, Joseph was probably cute, um, so she wanted to keep him. And now she's having a baby. She don't quite know how. He think he know how, but he don't know what to do, and hmm, there's a lot of questions. But that uncertainty, because Mary was willing and open to the power of the Holy Spirit, that song turned into a song of praise and adoration that rejoiced at the privilege of giving birth to a dream, because it is a privilege. You know, when you declare, I have a dream, when you own that dream, that is a privilege, because you honor God with your dream when you connect it to the Holy Spirit, because it says that God can do anything but fail. The power of the Holy Spirit, my God, it can shift the agenda in a house, in a community, in a church. It can change people's minds and their mindsets from a me, me, me attitude, which is what we see now in our world, to a we, we, we. Because now people are only talking about, you know, what I can get. 
how I can prosper and not thinking about the actions that I do and their effect on other people. So people are signing stuff and passing laws and, you know, if this helps me, this helps me. If this hurts you, my bad. But the power of the Holy Spirit, it can shift us from take, 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 to give, 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 to serve, 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 to help, help, help. to once again become a community, a community of God, a household of faith. Because now we just have houses, you know, not really homes, but a household of faith. That means I'm concerned about what happens in my house and I'm concerned about what happens in your house. So if you don't have enough, even if I have a very little, I will share what I have with you. We're a household of faith. And we're a household of faith through the power of God's Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you, when you and I open ourselves up to the power of God's Spirit, ordinary becomes extraordinary. The run of the mill becomes miraculous. I'm telling you, things that you thought could never, ever, 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 ever happen. Happen, as the Bible says, suddenly, immediately. You lay down one way and you wake up a whole different way. You go to bed sad and worried and stressed and you wake up at ease with God on your mind and prayer on your lips. The power of God's Holy Spirit, it provides the owners of that power with the ability to tread on serpents and scorpions. It trumps, no pun intended, the power of the evil one. And nothing by any means can hurt us who have allowed the power of God's Holy Spirit to be present in us. And that power is recognizable. You can see it. You can hear it in the voices of people who don't complain. You can hear it in the voices of people who will give you a even though things are not going well, ask how you're doing. Who come and see about you? Who give you that little holy handshake where they put a little, little bit of money in your hand and like, you know, because God told them through the power of God's Holy Spirit. The power of God's Holy Spirit makes the unbelievable believable because some of us in here got stories about what we've been through in the last two years you wouldn't believe it you wouldn't believe it but the power of the Holy Spirit makes our stories believable and makes our stories convincing and makes our stories a draw for others so when they hear our stories they ask well what must I do to get this power, what, what must I do yes. to still be smiling after all that I know you've been through? Yeah. The power of the Holy Spirit will turn frowns into smiles, even when you don't want them to. It will put a little pep in your step, even when you're tired. It's the end of the day, and you're like, mm, I just want to go home. But it'll, it'll help you to move along. And that's what we need in this world today. We need some people with a little bit more pep, and we need power. Because it seems like there is a, a power that has taken control and has convinced many people that there is no other power. And we all know that's a lie. 
We all know that's a lie. But sometimes lies can be very, very, very convincing. And that power that the enemy speaks of and talks about and shows off with smoke and mirrors. Because all we have to do is just show up in the room. The lights come on. We don't even have to say much. We don't have to do much. We just show up as people working under the unction of God's Holy Spirit and things change. I mean, no's turn into yeses. Long battles become pretty simple. People who said, no, 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 now say, okay, you can have what you want. That is that power. We don't have to beat anybody up with it. We don't have to beg and, and, and plead. All we have to do is stand up straight and show up as God's chosen vessels. Stand up straight and show up as God's people anointed and appointed for such a time as this. Stand up straight. Speak with conviction the word of God that flows out of the Holy Spirit that is within us. And once we do that, people start to back up because they don't know what's going on with y'all. <laughs> they don't know. But we know. But we know. God is able. God is able. I said God is able. God is able according to the power that's already working in each and every one of us. You don't even have to be in a sanctuary. You're home now on the couch. God is able. The power is working. And that's a great thing about the power. The power don't have to be in, you know, like a four walls and have to have stars and, you know, carpet. The power work. The power work in the car. The power work at the job. The power work at the grocery store. Wherever you are, you show up. The power shows up. So the power is working because God is working. And because God is so able. And God is able to do far more than we can ask, far more than we can imagine, which is why we got to get this dream thing straight. And I think we just need to dream a little bit bigger. Because think about God's dream. I'm going to create a whole family. You know, I'm going to save the world through a family, a dream. So I want you tonight to check your dreams and think about what you're dreaming about. You know, so maybe we need to um, pump our dreams up a little bit more. Yeah. You know, we got little like baby dreams. We need some big dreams, yeah. um, some God-sized dreams, some dreams that only God and the power of God's Holy Spirit can lift us into. God is so able. And I think the atmosphere right now is ripe for a move of God. It seems like things are just going in a really bad direction. In our world, there's, there's just so much going on. But this is a moment, similar to the moment when Jesus came and was birthed into the world, a moment where it seemed like everything was going wrong. And it seemed like the bad guys were winning. But right now, we in a moment where it seems like you can't get ahead. Every time something seems to be, you know, maybe we're getting out of this, or maybe things are getting better, something else happens. We're in a moment right now where you can't go any place, can't go to the movies, can't go to church, can't go to the grocery store, because people are all around and they got guns and they just doing all kind of stuff. It seems like nobody knows how to fix it. It seems like it's broken without repair. But this moment that we're in, this moment that we're in is ripe for the power of God's Holy Spirit. God's Holy Spirit. 
is specifically designed for such a time as this. Because once the power gets started, and it don't take much for the power to get started, because you know, you don't even need no music. It's all <laughs> once the power gets started, it's off to the races. So the question is, what are we going to do? Because we know the power is available. We know God's Holy Spirit is present. And we know God has chosen us collectively and individually. And we know we need to be open and willing and vessels to receive. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to have faith? Are we going to trust God? Are we going to trust other folks who have seemed to let us down time and time and time again? Even the ones that seem like they might be OK, they can only do as much as they can do. Are we ready to be overshadowed? in the way that Mary was? Are we ready to maybe not have all the facts, but still go with it? Because she didn't have all the facts. She didn't know exactly how it happened. All she knew is that I'm having a baby. Joseph wasn't in the room, but I'm having a baby. And sometimes we ask a lot of questions because we're not ready. We want to know all the little details. Tell me about how it's going to happen. Tell me the time. Tell me what I'm going to be wearing. Sometimes things just have to happen, and you just have to be open and willing for them to happen. You have to be ready. So the question comes again now, are we ready? Are we prayed up? Do we stay up talking with God? Are we ready to receive? Because you know, sometimes it's hard when, sometimes it's easier to give. Because when people give you stuff, then you're like uncomfortable. Like, what did I do? And you say thank you, and, but you don't, it's awkward. Are we ready to receive this greatness? Are we ready to receive this power? Are we ready to stand in the truth of who we are? as God's people, because I think that sometimes we're not quite ready, you know. Are we ready to move forward as a church and be the church that God intended? Are we ready? Because I think it, it takes some work, and I'm not all the time ready for work. <laughs> sometimes you're not ready for work, but whether you're ready for work or not, if it takes work, work you must do. So we have to continue to ask ourselves, what are we doing to prepare, to lay the groundwork? Are we focused on God in the right ways? Or are we focused on things about God? You know? And in these last two years, we found that some of our focus was on things about God, but not necessarily God. So we've had some time to self-correct and to get focused on God, which, again, you can do at home, in the building, in the parking lot, by yourself, with your sister, focused on God. And in that preparation, are we shining that light that we have? Are we letting others know that, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm ready and prepared for whatever happens. I'm ready and prepared for whatever God chooses to fix this. Because it, you know, I, have, I have plans, and there's some, I, I would like a lot of people to go away, and I would like a lot of things to change. 
but how God fixes it is how God is going to fix it. And we really, we have no idea, but we, we must get in the stream and move while the water is moving. So, for those of you who don't know how to swim, maybe this is the time for y'all to get some lessons because the water is moving quickly. Quickly. Time is filled with swift transitions. God is able. And we are able, through the power of God's Holy Spirit, we are able. We are able. We're able to dream. We're able to do. We're able to work. We're able to be the people that God intended for us to be. We are able, fully able. And we can be ready to be that container, that vessel for greatness. I know it's a little scary, you know, but you can be ready at five to be a container for God's greatness. And you can be ready at 95, because if you're still here, you still got time to be ready. You still got time. Now, just like every baby have a daddy, although if you watch Maury, some babies got multiple daddies, um, every God-sized dream requires the power of the Holy Spirit in order for it to become what God intended. God-sized dream. So really the only thing I think I have left to ask you is, do you know who your baby daddy is? Amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, God, we worship you and we praise you. We give your name the honor, God, and we give your name the glory, God. Oh, thank you, God. 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 Now, if there is anyone who is present in the sanctuary, and anyone who may have just come across this live stream and you do not know this Jesus we're talking about, you do not understand this power that we speak of, this Holy Spirit, now is a good time for you to make an acquaintance of God for you to become a part of God's family that God set in motion a long, long, long time ago. God is patient and God will wait for you. So this is a time when you can say, God, I wanna be a part of your family. God, I thank you for forgiving me of my sins and dying for me on the cross so that I might have eternal life. God, I thank you. And God, I want to become a part of your family. For those of you who are online, you can put it in the chat. I want to join the family. There's information on our website. There's information um, on our Facebook Live page. Contact us so we can connect with you and you can connect with us. And you can meet all your cousins right here at Morningstar. We're a pretty cool family. We're not a perfect family, but we serve a perfect God. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
Love you and appreciate you. Good morning, church. Here are four ways to give. First, at our website, morningstarccc.org. Search our menu, find and click give. Next on our mobile app, Morningstar CCC. Click give. Next through our cash app, dollar sign Morningstar 1009. And lastly, you can mail your check to 1009 Chandler Avenue, Linden, New Jersey, 07036. Church family, thank you for your time and attention. Stay blessed. People have been getting vaccinated, and I am vaccinated, and I am boosted, and I'm prayerful that all of you are getting vaccinated. As you know, we have begun and have been involved in the reassembling process since last September, and thank God we've had no reported incident of any kind of involvement through our assembling at Morningstar of COVID-19. So please continue to get vaccinated. We want you to be vaccinated. We want your health to be protected. And we want you to be reassembled. And this is for the health and the protection of the health of everybody. Thank you so much for your wonderful cooperation. In fact, your wonderful Morning Star cooperation. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you in the sanctuary building. Be blessed.